You're listening to Real Liberty Media. Please feel free to join in on our chat and live streams whenever you can. If not, access all of our podcasts at reallibertymedia.com. And remember, share Real Liberty Media with your friends, family, and on all of your social media outlets. Please help our station grow. And thank you for joining Real Liberty Media. Welcome to the Age of Fission Radio Show with your host, Lonnie Clark. We stand together and accept we now live in a world transformed by the nuclear industry. We expose and confront the intentional neglect and disregard for life on our planet by atomic energy. Consider social engineering programs who view our bodies, minds, and souls as assets on a balance sheet. We discuss vital current issues, interview activists, and engage our audience in an effort to allow all voices to be heard. We encourage our listeners to reclaim their power and their courage to take action to save our planet from the ravages of greed and indifference. Every voice matters. Our actions matter. We remind our listeners that happiness is resistance. Love is greater than fear. Good morning. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission Radio Show. I want to thank all of our listeners from whatever venue you're listening to us from. I really appreciate you caring enough about our planet to tune in. One of the things I do want to ask you if you're listening to my YouTube podcast, even if you get bored, please put it on mute and play it all the way through because listening to my YouTube videos all the way through makes us more visible on the YouTube channel. So that's just a little plug for my YouTube channel, Nuts for Art. Um, I want to thank our guest for joining us. He's a friend of mine through the Fuku fight. His name is Dave Parrish. I have never really personally met him. We've met through the internet, like most of us Fuku fighters have. He runs, in fact, he came up with this phrase. I think he calls himself a Fuku fighter. He has Fuku Friday. Every Friday he puts out a oh, five to six, maybe six, minute video sometimes it goes to 10 but rarely he keeps it short i strongly encourage all of our listeners to subscribe to dave parish it's d-a-v-e-p-a-r-r-i-s-h on youtube and listen to his fuku friday commentary every friday he gives you bits of information and frankly kind of like a cheerleading squad helping us to keep on because this is a lifelong fight he also runs a website called Operation Save the Earth, and I want to thank you, Dave, for joining us. Thank you, Lonnie. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, why don't you tell people how to find uh, Operation Save the Earth and tell them what that's about. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's easy. Just go to OperationSaveTheEarth.com. I know it's long, but, you know, I think it's important that, you know, everyone, you know, get that idea in their head because what Operation Save the Earth is really just a four-step plan. And because when the Fukushima nuclear disaster began in 2011, um, I was like, well, do we have a plan here? Does that anybody, anybody have a plan here? No. There was like no plan. You know, President Obama came out and said, oh, we'll keep you posted. And then never heard from him again about the subject ever. Right. Um, so I'm like, okay, so we have to make our own plan then, right? So. You know, I just took the usual break the glass approach and say, okay, we have a fire situation here. What do we do? You know, you got to know where the fire is. You got to know, you know, how to put it out. You got to know how to get the moms and kids out of the out of harm's way. And you got to make sure it doesn't happen again. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what Operation Save the Earth is based on. And what we did when we set up the, um, we set up a nonprofit organization first, and we set up a website, and we've, you know, had all these social media things. Uh, just feeding all this information. Is it an it official nonprofit 501c3? You know, we were an official uh, 501c3, but I shut that down last year. I basically fired myself from that job as being mm-hmm. the CEO of that uh, uh, operation because I didn't have time to, you know, do everything that I do and run, you know, this this uh, corporation that's supposed to be like doing, I'm with you. you know, we fundraising and all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, you know, that's no slight on, you know, uh, the great work that's being done by nonprofits, you know, here in this country, because that's to, to really one of the growth uh, uh, sectors of, you know, of uh, employment, of, you know, just everything. 
you know, there's a lot of great things going on in the nonprofit sector right now. Um, it's just I had to pull back because, A, I didn't think I was doing that good of a job. Um, at, you know, running that show, you know, I'm, I'm more about, you know, putting the content out and mm-hmm. sharing the information, you know. Um, so, you know, the 501c3 part is, is gone, but the plan part is still in place. And that's, right. you know, what was important. Yeah. Just kind of getting everybody on board with the idea of, you know, knowing more about it and taking time every day to commit to that and, you know, sort of learn more about the problem every day. If you did that, I mean, think about how how knowledgeable everyone would be by now if that was the case. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that people intentionally don't pay attention to it. Like I've talked to many people, they're like, "I don't know how you can." They, to me, they say, "How can you handle it? It's so depressing knowing there's nothing we can do." And this is, in fact, why I was very excited to have you on because. You announced on one of your Fuku Friday videos about a month ago now, I think it is, uh, an idea yep. to commemorate the 311 because the Fukushima disaster is an ongoing disaster. It's not resolved. It's ongoing. Right. They may be having the radioactive Olympics in Tokyo, but it's, it, they can, they, they, you know, you, it's just because you can't see the radioactivity. I mean, it's still there. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, there, there's still people, you know, I remember a few years ago, there was that doctor who moved out of Tokyo and they did an interview with him. And they said, he said, everyone should, yeah. you know, and that's something that they, that's an option that they weighed back in 2011. That's what uh, Prime Minister uh, Naoto Khan was looking at. It's like, do we have to move the capital to Kyoto? Because, you know, radiation, right? And, you know, to me, you know, all they did was, you know, hush that all up cover that up and, and try to make everybody forget, oh, well, we cleaned everything. Oh, did you? Did you? Then how come every time it rains there uh, in Fukushima or, or in Japan, you know, that, that radiation gets spread back around again? Right. You know, how come any time that there is a forest fire in Fukushima Prefecture, they send in the National Guard instead of regular firefighters? Do they really? Oh, gee, I don't know, because radiation, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that happened, oh, when was that? That was, I think, two thousand. 15, they had a, a fire there. And, you know, it's like if you have a fire in, you know, anywhere near around Chernobyl. Now, it's the same. What you're looking at is a, like a level one or level two radioactive event wow. when that stuff happens because it releases the cesium, the strontium, all that other stuff that has, you know, kind of like glazed itself into the plant life. Well, it gets all really thin into particulate matter, you know, as, as smoke particles. It goes back into the atmosphere thing. Ish, that's no fun. Well, this whole idea that there is no solutions, uh, this is why I liked your idea. Why don't you share with our listeners what your idea is on the to commemorate 3-11-2020? Sure. Um, I think, you know, one of the problems with just everything about Fukushima is, like you said, nobody wants to hear about it. They think that they're powerless. They think it's too That's big. Right. They think, oh, 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 you know. And, you know, look, just because, you know, it's the worst radioactive event, you know, that's taken place in the past 20 years, doesn't mean that you can't do anything about it at all. You know, in fact, it's just the opposite. With all the power that we have now with technology, you know, we can share information internationally, globally, instantaneously, you know, with each other. And, you know, we didn't have that uh, in 1986 after Chernobyl. We do now, you know, and it's a powerful tool that I think everyone needs to utilize more. Uh, especially in this fight. Why do you think we've had so much uh, success with uh, just keeping the word out about Fukushima? I mean, everybody knows about it now. Five years ago, they didn't Mm -hmm. because, you know, they didn't want to hear about it and the mainstream media wasn't telling anybody. So I've been like, okay, look, let's, let's, you know, utilize the tools that we have. And with this anniversary coming up, the ninth anniversary, the end of year nine of the Fukushima nuclear disaster, 3,200 and how many days later, uh, it's still going. Um, you know, I said, well, you know, let's do something about it. You know, nothing has ever really been done in the United States to commemorate it. You know, maybe, you know, a little candlelight vigil here or there, but, you know, no, like, major things. Um, because, you know, everyone says it's their problem. You know, oh, well, Japan, it's their problem, it's their problem. No, it's our problem. It's everybody's problem. Why? Because that's what the nuclear situation is. It's always a massive problem that we are always dealing with on a daily basis. And what I want to do uh, next month um, through Easy Talks, which is a online webinar meeting uh, space, 
is be able to just have a gathering for an hour m- midday on uh, the actual um, event date, uh, 311, and be able to, you know, just get together online and put our heads together and, and get some meditation done. It's called and Easy Talks? You, now, yes, on Easy Talks, you can download the app. It can, you can, be, you can uh, p- participate on your phone, on your laptop, and in any computer, and it's all going to be free. So um, I, I'm just now finalizing, you know, what that webinar, uh, the, uh, how that's all going to break out. Um, be, so be on the lookout for that in probably the next week or so. I'm going to have that information out, out on the web, out on our website. Um, and everyone's going to have the opportunity to, you know, just sit, be quiet, breathe, be, pre- be present, and send your vibrational energy out to the universe, out to the people in Japan, out to everybody. And let everybody know that you're thinking about them, thinking about this, and thinking about how we can eventually overcome this nuclear deficit that we've put ourselves in. We've dug such a hole that, you know, it, it seems like, oh, well, it's part of the firmament. We need to have nukes. We need to have, you know, you know, nuclear energy, nuclear weapons. That's, that's garbage. We got along fine for thousands of years without this junk. And now, in the past 60, 70 years, you know, we, we've you know, pushed ourselves to the brink of, you know, just, you know, light in general. And it's all backwards. We can reverse it and we can do that, you know, through our minds, through our intentions, through our energy. Exactly. Well, that is exactly right. Is it? It's really about our thoughts or things. And so this whole idea, the reason we don't have solutions to this nuclear catastrophe is because they've never really looked for one. That's the real reality. When they say they're going to clean up a nuclear site, what they're talking about is they're moving the poison from one place to another. They're not really fixing it. There's right. been zero effort to change it. It's incomprehensible. They think just because we can't see it, taste it, smell it, or touch it, or feel it, that we don't know what's happening, that it's not causing real mm-hmm. substantial da- damage to our lives. I mean, oh, it, absolutely. It, it, it actually truly is. It's it's incomprehensible, to be honest. Oh, I know. If most people, you know, were educated about the effects of low-dose radiation over prong, prolonged periods of time, we wouldn't be having this conversation, Lonnie. Everyone would be. You know what I mean? I mean, everyone would understand the severity of what that's like instead of, you know, buying into these, you know, little hormesis theories that, Oh, a little radiation is good for you. What a bunch of garbage. You know, let's let's be real. You know, let, let, let's let draw a straight line back to the beginning of the nuclear era, and then you'll put overlay a chart over the rise of cancer rates from that date forward. And I'm telling you, you know, cancer existed before nukes, but, man, cancer went through the roof as soon as nukes, you know, got in the game, right? And you're going to tell me, Oh, well, you know, it's not nuclear fault. It can be any number of these things. Yeah, it can be any number of those things that you can get cancer from, right? But it can also be the nuclear option, and you cannot deny that, okay? So, you know, all I know from my my own personal experiences, I have family members that were fine before 2011, and now they have thyroid cancer. Right. Okay. Oh, what's up from Fukushima? I'm like, how do you know? How do you know that they weren't outside? those two weeks after March 11, 2011, and they took in particulate matter. You don't. You weren't there with the spectrometer. To, to, and or you as in the case there, of my sister. You, know, naysayers. you certainly weren't there, naysayers, to exactly. you know, actually you know, tell, tell people to shelter in, in place for those two weeks, to tell people don't drink the milk for those months afterwards. No, no, none of that stuff came out. It was only much, much later that you know, everyone started to get the, get the idea of mm-hmm. just how severe – this problem at Fukushima is, and that's stacked on top of all the other nuclear problems that we've had throughout the course of the atomic age. And, you know, when's it going to end? It's going to end when we say so, when we demand it, when we make sure that it happens. Yeah. And that's only when we start really deciding that we have the courage to face it. And Mm -hmm. So this idea, Dave, tell them what you want to do on the 311 and how, 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 so what you're saying is that we're all going to get together and do like a group meditation? Mm-hmm. And so That's how, right. how will that, like we check in, a, 
in theory, we're checking in 15, 20 minutes early, and then someone's going to guide us through it. And how long do you anticipate yeah. it lasting? Well, we're, we're shooting for an hour. Um, and the person who Well, if be you have me meditating it, for an hour, Dave, you'll hear me snoring. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think, right? But look, I'm telling you, um, you know, I, I've done meditation throughout my life. You have. And I have. I had yeah since I was a kid I was I was taught that by my dad. Oh, thank and God. that's why um, you're awesome. <laughs> my, oh yeah, no it's great, you know. And I I met a, a spiritual leader um at an event oh gosh, about 8 years ago now and we just, you know, sat down and meditated instantaneously we hooked on that level. And ever since then, you know, he's grown uh, on to have, have his own um business called Samadhi Sea of Wisdom and basically it's just you know, an opportunity for people to talk to somebody about, you know, everything, really, you know, anything that's spiritual, anything that, you know, is, you know, concerning, you know, on a personality level, on anything, you know, how to breathe, how to be present, how to, you know, really tune your vibrational energy in a positive way. That would be good. And I know it sounds like a lot of woo-woo, but look, I'm telling you, as somebody who has been doing meditation their whole life, um, the benefits of it. Because if you do it the right way, it's not just like, oh, I'm, I'm just breathing now. No, you have to be able to engage in not just the inner core of who you are, the, the inner uh, powers that are within you. No, you get to expand out into the universe when you med meditate in a way that you cannot even imagine doing in any other way prior to that. So, you know, uh, my, my spiritual guide, Michael Post, is going to be there with us that hour. And they ain't going to be no sleeping. I'll tell you that. There awesome. is just gonna be I'm actually looking forward to it, Dave. To be honest, it'll okay. be really great to have a guided meditation because I've, I've attempted meditation on my own, and I've gotten pretty good at it. But honestly, I can do it for 10, 15 minutes, but after that, I start to nod. So it'll be really, if nothing else, it'll be peer pressure on my consciousness to stay awake. <laughs> right. But I mean, this is, I think it's really exciting because one of, you know, anybody who listens to my show is fully aware in the last year, I'm up to my earballs in all of the, although I'm always invigorated to talk to people who know about uh, specific problem areas, but my big thing is about the nuclear denial. Like, we are, I mean, yeah. we're having the radioactive Olympics. I mean, my own sister just recently died from cancer. She was right. diagnosed and within four months was gone. Now, she lived 20 mm -hmm. miles south of San Onofre, and she lived right mm -hmm. on the coast. Like, she used to walk every day on the coast. She moved there five years ago, and now, five years later, she's dead. You're not going to convince me that it's not from her exposure to being blasted from radioactivity from the Pacific coast from Fukushima and from San Onofre. To me... You know, I asked my brother-in-law to get her a heavy metal test, and they thought I was outrageous. They thought that was just beyond. Of course. I mean, because I think if we had heavy metal testing, we could know what's in our systems, right, Dave? Oh, sure. I think if we did on a regular basis, you know, just like as a normal part of your annual where, you know, get that blood test, right? And it's like, oh, hey, you know, here, here's what your metal count is. You know, I think people would be shocked to see what that really is on, an, on a, a yearly basis because, I mean, we take in way more than we're being told we are, right? Yeah. You know, it's in our food, it's in our air, it's in our water, it's everywhere, right? And if it's a heavy metal, depending on how, you know, what, what kind of radioactive isotope it is, it can stick around in your body and do all kinds of damage. And who wants that? That's no fun, right? So, you know, we need to be more aware of, you know, how what we're taking in, Right. And how we are, you know, able to keep healthy by avoiding those things. Yeah. And just know the I mean, just be I mean, this is kind of the reality that I've understood. We are living in the toxic stew like there is no getting out of it. We can't pretend our way out of it. We, It's happened like one of the things that has shocked me over the last six years is how many sites. Like that report I did last week on Treasure Island in San Francisco with Steve Zeltzer yeah. on uh, Treasure Island and Hudson Point, I think it's called, in San Francisco Bay. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, to me that is shocking. I'm always stunned when I find new places that the government has spread its radioactivity, and then the standard procedure is just 
pretend it's not there. Like, let's just pretend it's not there and everybody getting sick, it's because they smoke, they eat, they eat and drink the wrong things and, or their family history or whatever they want to give an excuse uh, to. Uh, well, you know, excuses are excuses, right, Lonnie? And, yeah. you know, why does Shannon Doherty have stage four breast cancer? Um, she, does. she was in remission yeah. before. She, yes, right now. And you know, she just announced it last week. And, um, where is she living? Downwind of where the Woolsey fire was. And we all know what That's the Woolsey right. fire really was. That's right. Right. Um, you know, why did Luke Perry die at such a young age from a stroke? Where did he live? Down the wind, downwind from the Woolsey fire site. Everybody downwind from that Woolsey site. Hey, guess what? You're getting sick. Everybody knows it. Kim Kardashian knows it. Vince Neal knows it. You know, all these famous people who are losing people as a result know it. Right. So when I when I say know your environment, I mean, know your environment, know where you're living, know what's coming at you, because if you don't, you're not not only, you know, uh, selling yourself short, but you are selling everybody around you short, your loved ones, your children. Right. You know, oh, and, and they think, you know, oh, well, you're just, you know, over exaggerating, you're overstating it. No, we're not. No, we're not. You're what you're doing is you're following their playbook. And that is the playbook of underplaying the problem. Right, Lonnie? They want mm-hmm. you to forget about it. They want you to think, you know, happy thoughts and That's everything right. will be fine. And you, you're you're not going to get sick if you just smile the problem way. I'm like, come on. But Seriously, I mean, that's, that's not even realistic. Even the Wolfie Fire, think about it. Michael Landon, uh, John Wayne, all those cowboys, all those people that did all of those uh, westerns in the late 60s, in the 60s, and in the Nevada. late 50s. They were all out in near the Woolsey Fire around Chatsworth, around the back, back end of that. They were in the Nevada desert where the Nevada test site was. They all died of cancer. Mm-hmm. And the, you know, this, yeah. this is the thing about this, this toxin is you don't get an immediate result. It takes a while. And then when it does, it comes on aggressively and it's out of the blue. It feels like it's out of the blue because you haven't seen the poison. Yeah. You haven't tasted it. You haven't felt it. There's no, there's no seeing it. It's kind of like the sad part. Well, I wrote a letter to the Olympic Committee, uh, mm-hmm. and I sent them five of the Mina No Data site books. And you know what my ask yeah. was, mm-hmm. Dave? My ask was not that they cancel it because I know they're not going to stop a multi-million dollar thing. My ask was at least please look at this information. Go to Dr. Helen Caldicott's website. And at the minimum, bring your own food and water like the Koreans are doing. To me, that's a oh, better know, right? thing. Yeah. When people talk, when we hear about radiation exposure, people do not realize all tests, 100% of the exposure level rates are for external exposure only. They ne- There is no safe level for internally ingesting even a millionth of a particle of radioactivity. It, it is a. The, in fact, wasn't it uh, Dana Durnford discovered this Dr. Gilmetti out in New Mexico? I think he was yeah. studying dogs yes. for over 20 years to try to find the smallest amount of radioactivity he could contaminate the dogs with to see how low they could go. And guess what? There was never. That over 20 years, they all still got sick. He still tortured these dogs. Oh generations of dogs were being tortured in this study. Long-term, low-dose radiation exposure. Doesn't matter, you know, what it is, eventually it's going to catch up to you. You know, that's that's what his studies are showing, and that's what every study shows. That's, John right? Goffman wrote it's several somebody... books on that. He said, exposure yes. to low-level radioactivity, low-level, not high-level, low-level for a prolonged period of time, is just as dangerous as if you were exposed to a high-level blast, if not worse. Just as dangerous. I hope your listeners take that to heart, okay? Because, you know, again, you know, the common narrative says otherwise. Oh, don't worry. A little bit's fine. You know, under this level is fine. Sheesh. You know, uh, if you keep moving that level, well, guess what? It doesn't matter. You'll always say it's fine, right? You know, What's the real level? What's real background radiation supposed to be? It's not 0.15. It's l- way less than that, right? It's yeah. just that, that the level that's quote-unquote acceptable is that. And it's like, well, you know, acceptable, what that means is losses, risk, 
You know, this is the kind of actuarial stuff that people in insurance companies look at, right? So that's what they're thinking of. They, they look at us as expendable, Lonnie. You know this, oh, right? Know. Oh, can't save everybody. And, you know, we want to thin out the herd anyways. Well, guess what? You know, doing it this way is <laughs> – it's not just diabolical, it's wrongheaded because, like, you, all you're going to do is poison, you know, the well forever with this radiation, right? And, it's you know, eventually we're going to have it's, a it's, children of men situation where nobody can, you know, make babies anymore. And then we're, then it's going to be all over. It's going to be all over, so. I mean, it's very, this is why I like the now. idea of the meditation, the group meditation, and I hope people will join us as we get information out. And I hope to have you back before like the week before the Fukushima thing, we'll do an interview and we'll, I'm going to play it. It probably won't hit uh, Real Liberty Media because that's on a Wednesday, but we will definitely play it so that people who listen to us on Spreaker and on my YouTube channel and uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, uh, if anybody happens to get to us on that, although I've had people telling me they're suppressing right. me because they're looking for me. But, uh, you mm-hmm. know, the thing is, if we create a new what I, you know, like a whole new idea or a new vibe. We cannot create solutions until we think they're possible. If everyone continues to say, oh, this is an impossible deal, it's going to be impossible. Uh, it isn't until we can actually face it and realize that once we face it, we can figure out how to live through it because we're not, mm-hmm. there is so much nuclear contamination exposed to the face of the earth right now that we are going to have to deal with it forever as a human species. I mean, yeah. this is not going to okay. be something. This is going to this is why I called my show The Age of Fission. Tom Ackerman coined that term, but I think it's mm-hmm. perfect yeah. because this is the new epoch. And in fact, uh the scientists, mm-hmm. the way they mark the anthropomorphic age was the dawn of nuclear contamination. They could mark it they could see where the exposure to new radioactive nuclides spiked in the atmosphere. And from that point on, mm-hmm. we've entered the anthropomorphic age. Everything is different. And this leads yeah. me, you know, tomorrow there's that, I don't know if you guys are having one where you live, but I know here in Eugene, uh, in Salem, Oregon, uh, we're going up to the, um, they're going to be a climate, it's kind of, they're calling it climate action strike or something like that to try to get the Oregon legislature mm-hmm. to pass a Green New Deal piece of legislation. I'm going because I want to interject the idea that nuclear contamination massively contributes to the c- climate collapse, which is absent from oh, every yeah. conversation about climate change. I call it climate collapse. I don't call it climate change because the climate is collapsing. Right. When I, I mean, it. This is where the, the you know, fascists always get around. Well, the, it's always changing. Yes, it is always changing. But we are having a climate collapse so that humans will not be able to sustain themselves like they have for the last several hundred thousand years. So, but I right. think that this is a big issue. Not discussing how nuclear contamination has contributed to the collapse of our climate. I think it's a huge elephant in the room. Of course. You know, what do they never talk about, Lonnie? How nukes work, right? Most nuclear reactors are what? Boiling water reactors. What does that mean? That means that it uses water to what? Both turn the turbine and cool off and keep the radiation away from everybody else. Cool off those uh, nuclear fuel rods, right? And then what do you have? You have hot water left over. Some of it's tritiated. Some of it's not. But you still have hot water left over. You had cool, regular, you know, regular old plain water before now it's heated up now some of it's uh irradiated with uh what tritium or whatever and it's and guess what you know that has to go out somewhere right it has to go back out in the uh in the environment somewhere right so all you're doing is releasing hot water that you know might or might not have radiation in it great that's great you know how is that helping the environment it's not it's not at all you know they keep saying nukes are are clean green and safe that's garbage they're yeah. always leaking radiation all the time. And again, with this hot water problem, you know, that, oh, oh, you know, oh, they, they're talking about, oh, we're going to move to the small modular reactors. We're, we're going to do all this stuff with thorium salt and everything. It's, and I keep saying, it's like, really? Y'all been saying that for the past 30 years and that has not left the lab since. 
right? Because, oh, oh, well, we're not getting any funding for these new nukes, new, new generation nukes. You know why? Because you can't make money off of them. It's that simple. Off the large boiling water reactors, guess what? You make billions of dollars, billions to make, billions to run, and then billions to shut down, right? If you have a small modular re- reactor or a thorium salt reactor, you only make millions of dollars. And when you're used to making billions with a B dollar, you do not want to go back to making millions with an M dollar. That's why nukes are dead in the water right now. They have priced themselves out of the market, and they, they're just sore losers. They can't let it go. What I don't understand, Lonnie, is these people who've made all this money over this past 60 years of the atomic age, made all that nuclear money, what? You ain't got enough? You didn't make enough? What, did you spend it all? On what? Hookers and blow the whole time? You need to make some more? What's going on here? Because if you don't know how to reinvest your dollar at this point into something you can actually, you know, look at sustainable and, you know, continue to make, you know, investment dollars year in, year out instead of, you know, oh, I'm going to throw my money down on um, plutonium. You know, I'm, I'm sure that your, your uranium spot prices are going to come back up. No, they're not. They're never going to come back up to what they were before 2008. You are delusional. If you think that, you know, it's time to, you know, you know, get in the uh, mindset of the new economy because there's ways that you can make a lot of money. You do know that way this administration, though, Dave, this administration is actually uh, now endorsing the uranium mining and they're going, we're going to, our government's going to be subsidizing the uranium mining. Right. I don't know. I mean, look. You know, I know most investors think of uranium as any other widget, right? They think it's, you know, it's just like, you know, uh, I don't know, hog feet futures or whatever. They, they, they think that, you know, it's just, it's just a thing, right? And it's not just a thing. It's something that, you know, kills people. It's something that hurts the environment. I mean, look, generations in the past knew that there were some rocks you don't pull out of the earth. Why? Because it makes you sick. Okay, no, but for some reason, this generation, the greatest generation, just to, you know, completely forgot about that. You know why? Because they saw it as a commodity that was tradable, that you could make money off of. And believe me, they've done very well for themselves over the past six years with that commodity. But guess what? Time's up. You know, you have to start looking at it the same way you look at Blockbuster Video and Buggy Whips. Neither one is viable any longer, right? Neither is uranium. Neither is, you know, nuclear power. You know, it's time to, like, just shift away from that. I mean, Germany gets it. So many other countries get it. But, you know, Russia, you know, they, they invested so much. It's part of their uh, portfolio. They got to keep it, blah, 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 right? I'm like, come on, man. Come on. They're, you have to, like, look beyond what used to work for you uh, and look towards what is going to work for everybody in the future. Well, this is one of the things our listeners can do. Call your elected officials and tell them that you do not want the government to support the uranium mining industry because the uh, there's a, I subscribe to a news feed called uh, Western Uranium and Validium, and they mm-hmm. put out sure. uh, they put out a recent uh, email to all of us and told us that you know the governor of Wyoming is rest assured and told them that he's gotten good word of it that President Trump plans on supporting the uranium mining industry because it is faltering. So don't worry, the United yeah. States government is going to come. They don't believe in socialism, but they do believe in bailing out these failed industries. It's It's unbelievable. It's called corporate socialism. Oh, you know, don't bail out the people, bail out the corporations. Right. Right. Because they're too big to fail. We need them. Huh. Right. Right. I doubt that. I mean, let me let me ask you a question, Lonnie. Do we need Kmart? Not yeah. anymore. Right. No. 30 years ago, we did. Do we need it now? No. So what happened to Kmart? It went bye bye. Right. It's called supply and demand. Right. This is basic. This is Econ 101 stuff here. Right. Oh, it's, it's too big to fail. We need. No, no, no. We don't need nukes. We did. We never really needed nukes. The only reason they introduced the nuclear power, Lonnie, was what? Oh, um, atoms for peace. We have to, you know, justify nuclear weapons with nuclear power, right? And it's like, man, what a ripoff. What an incredible ripoff this has been. And everybody just gets sick as a result. 
I'm like, hey, guess what? You know, mom, dad, America, do you know that 40 million Americans live within a 50 mile radius of a nuclear facility in this country? No, I That's did not know people. that. How many? That's a lot of people. 40 million live within, because we have, what, 99 working nuclear reactors in this country. And guess what? There's enough people that live around those areas. And it's mostly, what, poor people that live closer to those areas, right? And and uh, and the uh, NRC will tell you, oh, if you if you live within a, a ten mile radius, then then you uh, might have to might have considerations. But anything beyond that, you're fine. That's the most ridiculous thing ever, ever, ever. Because how are you going to stop the wind? How are you going to stop the wind, NRC? Because I have seen, you know, what the projections look like at some of these nuclear sites with just one reactor going haywire, and then the wind taking everything out past 10, 20, 30, 50 miles out. So, you know, you know, all, all these little fairy tales that they've told us over the years about nukes and how safe they are, huh, you know, it's so like I said, you know. Well, I will tell Canada you, lots of people that. believe it. Lots of people believe yeah. the fairy tales. My own sister, well, I was talking to her, you know, she's a Trump supporter, and we were talking about, like, how could you possibly support him? And she was saying, well, you know, he finally got this and that cleaned up. And, and I said, well, did you know about that he reclassified 100 million gallons of highly radioactive waste so they could bury it in low, shallow graves and just abandon it? She's like, so? I'm like, you don't think that's damn? She goes, well, well, I guess we'll see, but it's probably not that bad. Like, literally, people don't, uh, they, people do not comprehend how, I mean, Besides the fact that two people who were driving those trucks have already died from doing it. I mean, that was a yeah. small newspaper article I saw from a Wyoming. I was kind of checking to see have there been any accidents. And, yes, there have been. And the people that were, mm -hmm. you know, there was a truck carrying this waste. And for some reason, so this is the other part about carrying this waste across it is the Wigner effect. The Wigner effect has effect, you know, high levels of radioactivity mm -hmm. affect the metals and how engines work and how things work. So this is why oh, sure. the machinery at these at these faulting aging machines, which the NRC is just is considering giving them all an 80 year lease across the board. They've asked mm -hmm. for all the new plants to have an 80. It's like asking us to drive our cars for 80 years. I mean, right. our cars are you know a new plant was designed to last for 20 years and then be brought down. That's it. Yeah. They're not okay. meant to last for 40 years. And the canisters that we store our waste in are meant to be changed out every 10 or 15 years, and we're extending the lives of them even though we know they leak at 20 years. I mean, the yeah. level of disregard, it's almost as if the people running the nuclear industry know that they have created such a mess. They don't, you know, at this point, it's just so bad they're not, they have no regard for life at all. They're just going for the gold, getting, you know, getting as rich as they possibly can, hoping that they're going to throw a Hail Mary and their families will be safe or something. Yeah, but here's the problem. I and mean, look at GE right now. Look at Westinghouse right now. Look at all of those, you know, big name nuclear providers over the past 40, 40 30 years. And, you know, look at them now. They're nothing. GE is next to bankrupt. I don't know. It, it, it's been delisted, hasn't it? I mean, that thing is it, it's garbage stock now. Westinghouse used to be this mighty powerful thing, and now what is it? It's, it's garbage. You know, it, all of you know, the, the big money that was pushed into nuclear back in the 60s, 70s, uh, and, and uh, into the 80s, you know, that's all dried up now. They're all, they're all scrapping for nickels because that's all that's left over. And if y'all thinking that, you know, some type of miracle is going to happen where there's going to be this nuclear renaissance, guess what? You had that shot in 2008. That's what you were pushing for. That's when uranium spot prices were at their highest. And then Fukushima happened. And now you're done. Forever. And it's just a matter of the nuclear power industry, you know, just, you know, throwing in the towel and understanding that you lost. You lost. Yeah, you did win all those years and years and years. And you, you, obviously, it's like you said earlier, people still believe the lies, the mythology of, you know, how everything is. Oh, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Yeah, you know, I, I keep telling it's like, yeah, you keep keep believing that mythology till you get sick. And it won't matter how much money you have. It won't matter which, you know, bracket you're in because cancer doesn't care. 
what any of that stuff is about. They Cancer only cares about taking you out, right? And, you know, you know that, that's kind of the underlying, the whole thesis behind nukes, right? Oh, we're providing you this and that and the other thing, but we're taking you out at the same time. You know, it's kind of like the, uh, the tobacco industry. Oh, yeah. we're giving you a service. We're giving you something that you enjoy. It'll probably kill you, right? So... You know, well, the thing is, smoke, actually, the tobacco industry is actually not, easier. Not like, they did, not like they did 50 years ago. People don't smoke like they did 50 years ago now. Why? Because our mindset has changed about how safe cigarettes are, how safe nicotine is, how safe all the additives that they put into cigarettes are. Oh, and we found out, hey, guess what? You get this, 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 and this from it. Oh, wow, yeah, you know, all of those doctors that, that recommend it. You smoke cigarettes back in the 50s and 60s, they're all dead now, okay? I mean, you know, here we are in 2020, and if you still think that cigarette smoking is good for you, you're the outlier, right? To me, it's the same with nukes. You still think here, you know, nine full years after Fukushima, and it's still leaking into the ocean, it's still leaking into the atmosphere, you still think that nukes are safe, clean, and got no problems, really? That's your, your, go back to smoking. <laughs> Think that. Well, this is know, this thing. Great. You know, TEPCO has announced that they are going to do what the IAEA has suggested, and they are going to dump all those hundreds and hundreds of barrels of water mm-hmm. into the Pacific Ocean. And they think it's yeah. not going to affect anything. They really believe that. Oh. Well, I think, you know, with the whole water situation at Fukushima Daiichi, this is a pretty complex problem. Okay, obviously. You know, first of all, we need to acknowledge the fact that water has been leaking into the Pacific Ocean literally every day since the disaster began, right? Right. I mean, they put up an ice wall that's only partially effective, right? There's still like 100 tons of radioactive wastewater that sluices its way through and gets through to the ocean every day. Ice wall, sea wall, doesn't matter. It's, it's getting out there, right? Oh, it's, it's, it's localized to the bay there, Dave. That's fine. Yeah, the, the bay that they lay down how much concrete on the bottom of that thing uh, uh, over the years? 2012, 2013, they were pouring concrete into the bay to absorb all of the radiation that was coming from the plant directly, right? So you get the ice wall up in 2016. They, they, they got that thing finalized. Okay, that's nice. Um, it's only partially effective. You wasted hundreds of millions of dollars. Two guys died making the thing. Oh, but nobody died because of Fukushima, right? Um, it, to me, you know, if you're if you're working on the site and you dropped dead or a heart attack, guess what? You died of Fukushima radiation. You died because you had you were trying to save everybody from this nightmare that just will not end, right? Oh, but no, well, we're going to have some robots that are going to take care of that problem for us, Dave. Really, you know, every robot they sent down there has done done what, Lonnie? Died, right? They've all croaked during not even like they don't even get to finish their mission. They get halfway through and the radiation kills them, right? Oh, we'll, we'll pick up a few pebbles just to show that that's progress. Like they yes, did last. Yes, but then you have these guys like James Conca out there saying from you know Forbes magazine that tritium never hurt anybody. They tritium has. Literally, in an article that James Conker wrote for Forbes magazine, literally he was talking oh. about dumping of the water and how it's perfectly fine over a small period of time that tritium forms naturally and that no harm has ever come to humans or the environment from tritium, no matter what the concentration or the dose. Literally, no, I'm just sad that Mr. Conker doesn't know how to read a damn report, really, because we have reports that show otherwise. Right, Lonnie? We, you've read stuff where it's like, well, how how long does tritium last in the body? You know, there's up to like seven days, right? Now, oh, because it's water, it passes right through. Yeah, but it's still tritium, right? And it's still, you know, especially if you just you keep cycling it through, cycling it through, you know, how long it, until it really affects you, right? You know, go read a report, Mr. Conca. Oh, wait, you can't because Forbes pays you to spew out this mm-hmm. garbage, all the time. I, I mean, you shouldn't trust anything that comes but out I mean, of his mouth uh, or anybody at work. Not to play devil's advocate here, but the, this is the reality. Mm-hmm. Fukushima, literally, the whole entire world, the, all the world governments ought to be focusing on the whole Fukushima thing because, honestly, it's an ongoing event. What if their little experiment 
the, let's just dump these hundreds of millions. I think it's like 300, almost 300 million gallons of this treated water mm-hmm. into the Pacific Ocean. What if halfway through they start seeing that, oh, my gosh, it's really causing harm? They're still accumulating water in Fukushima on a daily basis because they still have to cool yeah. those you know, nuclear power plants that are yep. in constant – they're in a meltdown state. They have not been covered. They have not been capped. They are not over right. with. They're still making hundreds of thousands of gallons of radioactive water every day. Now, they have yeah. figured out ways to filter out most of it except for tritium, right? Most of it is taken out and stored in these tanks. And so, but, but to play devil's advocate, this is why the IAEA basically said, you don't really have a choice because at a certain point, all of Japan would be filled with these tanks of water and it would be ongoing. It's like, you, you, it's this never-ending flow, kind of like Lucy on that. Mm-hmm. Remember Lucy, Lucille Ball when she was like making candies and they were coming out of the machine, right? right? That's kind of like yeah. how it is. <laughs> so no, you're right. I mean, they That's this may, it is the logical idea to release it into the ocean. This is the thing that I'm. This is why I like the idea of the meditation. We have to come up with better solutions. We must. There must be solutions that can be found. That's not just like, oh, let's just ignore it and hope it doesn't really harm us. That's that's their. Right. That is basically the prescription for what they want to do. Is like, okay, let's don't test anybody. Let's don't tell anybody about that it causes harm. In fact, they've recently turned off a lot of data online, so you can't even find right. out what the levels are. So that's it. That's their method now. And I think that we need to come together to create a, an atmosphere, a scientific atmosphere where the scientists are saying, we're not going to take this. We're going to start. We realize this is so grave. We need to start breaking with corporate protocol to find a solution that's humanitarian, that we can save our planet and our species, because otherwise we're going to destroy this planet with this. Oh, absolutely. I mean... But there is no easy answer with the water solution at Fukushima Daiichi. Like you said, there's millions of gallons of radioactive wastewater. Now, I am officially against the release of water into the Pacific Ocean Me for too. obvious reasons. Me too. Uh, the number one reason is that uh, each and every single tank that ha- contains this water contains what? Oh, it's, oh they, they say it's just tritiated water, but there wasn't a, wasn't a report out there two years ago, Lonnie, that showed that that wasn't the case, that there really was that's other right. elements. They haven't really cleaned in. it. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, they, I mean, it, it, it's partially cleaned water, right? And I, I'm, I'm from what I've read with the uh, recent reports with what they want to do in Japan, they want to dilute what is in the tank, so they want to add clean water, basically, to what, what's in the tanks, and then do a release over time, like, like over years. Like, okay, this month we're, le- we're releasing the content of this tank. This month we're releasing content of this tank. You know, if they're going to do that, I want to know the exact content of each and every tank that goes out. I don't want to. I don't want it just to be this this blanket that says, oh well, you know, it's mostly tritium. What's the other stuff? Can you please tell me that? Oh, no, we don't want you to be, because if we do, then you're going to you know, make us think about it. Well, no kidding, dummies. You know, can you at least have a little bit of transparency here? No, no, let's not do that because, you know, again, <laughs> no, you know, no. it doesn't fit the narrative. <laughs> and not only that, Dave, I don't trust them if they say they're they're only going to release one or two tanks a day or what. I do not trust anything they say. Like, if they, like, honestly, it, everything they've ever done is lie. That's all they do. In fact, they don't even have a safety protocol. Their safety protocol has never been tested. So if they say they're releasing one tank a day, you know they're probably going to be releasing five or six. I mean, I don't trust oh, them at all. And, I mean, there's no transparency. They have the Japanese government pass a law to keep secrecy going to keep the journalists from reporting on it. How severe is the problem if the government gets involved and refuses to allow journalists to report on it? Yeah. Well, you know, it's all part of the policy, right? I mean, there was the uh, State Secret Act in, what, 2013, 2014 in Japan that told everybody just to shut up about 
Fukushima radiation. Don't, you know, don't report it. You'll, you'll go to jail. Right. And people pretty much fell in line with that. So it's like, you know, the, the suppression that's taking place, you know, it's uh, again. All well, you know what? Suppression only happens if people place. comply. And when people stop complying and some people may have to go to jail, that's kind of the sad part about it is people may have to go to jail to break the system because honestly, it's going to take people who are willing to talk and willing to buck the system. You know, you can't let the people that are monsters, because they really have no regard for life. They don't care if your children right. live or die. Evidently, we're having the radioactive Olympics. I'm still, I'm still nonplussed about the radioactive Olympics. I just cannot believe anybody would even buy a ticket to go to Fukushima, <laughs> like to go to Tokyo and go yeah. sit at a bench and watch people play baseball in the Fukushima prefecture. I know. Uh, that's just madness to me. Let's let's go to the softball games, the soccer games, you know, at the J Village in, in Fukushima where they, you know, where the workers, you know, would camp out in between, you know, sets during the initial disaster. It's like, come on, man. Oh, it's, it's, it's all clean now. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I mean, you've seen it. Lonnie, you've you've read the citizens' radiation data map, right? Um, yeah. You you know exactly what that entire area looks like, and you know if you're going there and and look, I, I look for the people still living, still stuck there in Fukushima Prefecture for whatever reason, because the government tells them not to leave. They're, they they won't support them. They won't give them any type of monetary remuneration. Blah blah blah, right? The people that are stuck there. They don't go out. They take, you know, again, they know their environment. You know, do the kids go out and play in the in the grass there? No. Why? You know, what mother there would, you know, be okay with that? None of them would, right? What's the birth rate in Fukushima Prefecture? Not good, right? It's been like ne- next year. I mean, on all of Japan, they have an incredibly low birth rate here, post-Fukushima especially, right? Because who wants to take that risk? Who wants to be, you know, the one yeah. that, that has a deformed child? that comes out of the womb and it's like, oh, well, you know, I, I just have, I just have to accept this, right? This is the new nuclear reality here. And, you know, it's, it's sad. I feel I, I, that's, you know, the main reason why I started Operation Save the Earth to begin with. It's like, so that we can stand together with the people who are still suffering there in that affected area. The same as the people, you know, still living in Belarus. This, the same you know, for the people still living in, in Washington, in St. Louis, you know, downwind from the Woolsey yeah. fire. Anybody near a nuclear site, guess what? I, my heart is with you, and I stand with you. And what you were talking about earlier, you know, this sort of uh, hopelessness, this, this sense that, you know, we can't change things. That's, no, that's not true. That's not true. It's, it's like I was telling you earlier. There are people who, who smoked, you know, three packs a day in the 60s. They're all dead now, right? You don't do that now. You can. Some people still do, but not half as many as they used to, right? So why, why you know, go back into the nuclear era? You know, we're trying to push forward here, right? So let's do it together by rewriting the nar- narrative. And that's what we have been doing since, two, uh, since uh, 311, 2011. All of us, all the Fuku fighters, everyone who's put out content about Fukushima and the radiation, everything that's come since then. We're all doing our part to change the mindsets of the general populace to understand that, guess what? That old tech that, you know, everybody used to say was clean, green, safe, and, you know, was too cheap to meter, that's all, that's all a myth. You know, don't believe it. Here's what the real situation is. You know, Fukushima is a real problem that exists today, every day, until it gets done. I don't know when that's going to happen, right? We need to get rid of that nuclear problem altogether. Instead of racing for a cure, how about stopping the cost? Right. That, that's my attitude. I mean, we need a nuclear industry, but it needs to be a nuclear remediation industry. We, You know, the idea of nuclear energy, nuclear power is dead. It's an expensive, outdated yep antiquated form. I mean, and we all know that the only reason they really built them was so that they could have nuclear weapons, which is also a dead idea. So the only thing we really need to do is focus on creating a nuclear remediation industry so that we can 
figure out solutions on how to really, instead of just moving the dirt from one place to another, the toxic poison from one place to another, we have to figure out how do we unsplit the atom. Like at a scientific right. level, we need to figure out how to stop the fission. That's really what we need. We need to figure out how to stop, how to blanket this contamination so that we can prevent it from entering into our systems and into our body. I mean, I think that we can create solutions if they put their mind to it. But unfortunately, there hasn't been any money or funding to deal with that. So, Dave, we're at the end of the hour, and I want you to tell people again how to find you and what to be looking out for on your message for 311. Sure. Um, well, you can always uh, stop our, our website at operatesafetyearth.com, or you can follow us on Twitter. That's at O-S-T-E, eight minutes, all spelled out. And um, you're going to get the latest Fukushima news of the week, and you're going to find out more about what the meditation is about, when we're going to have it, you know, how you can participate. Uh, there's going to be ways that you can, you know, either just be there um, or you can, like, you know, have the video of you there. So there's, there's going to be opportunities for you to, you know, really be engaged uh, when we're doing the the um, the event on March 11th, and everyone's uh, open and you know invited to join in. And if you've never done meditation before, don't worry. Michael will walk you through it, and you're going to have a lot of fun. And it's going to be an opportunity for us to all get together on the rare occasion, and you know, and not not celebrate so much, but really, um, you know, be in remembrance, you know, and and take this time to be in solidarity in a true way with the people who've been suffering with this nuclear nightmare yeah. since 2011 and, you know, in, in, in a larger sense, since 1945, all of us mm-hmm. have, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, I think, you know, if, if you want to look at it as, as an opportunity to pray, please do. If you want to look at it as an opportunity to just, you know, sit still and, you know, and not be caught up in, you know, all of this information that comes flying at us at a million miles an hour. You know, think of it that, that, that way either uh, is fine also, you know, but just be present uh, when we do it. And again, look for the information. I'm going to have that coming out here in the next week or so of how you can register, how you can participate, and, uh, and you know, just how you can be a part of what it is to be a Fuku fighter, what it really is is to be a Fuku fighter because you know, Lonnie, everyone who listens to your show knows. And what we're looking for is for everybody else to get caught up to us because we're ahead of the game. We and we know when when uh, 311 uh, started, it changed your life. It changed my life. It changed how many people, people's lives that are still out there making content, that have made content over the years about this, mm-hmm. right? It's something that affects each and every single one of us on a daily basis. And we have an opportunity now to not just seize the narrative and, and change it, but to, you know, start building, putting down the blocks for the future, because that's what we have to do. We need to get the next generation on board with the idea that a nuke zero world is possible. And it's not just something that's possible. It's something that we all need to shoot for. Amen to that. Well, those are great closing words. Thank you, Dave. You guys have been listening to Dave Parrish. Uh, This is your host, Lonnie Clark, with the Age of Fission radio show. And we will be uh, speaking to Dave again one more time before 3.11 for sure. And I want to thank everybody for joining us. And you can find us at all the various outlets, and we'll have links in the podcast. Put your courage feed on, you guys, because we definitely need everyone. Thank you, Dave, for joining us. Thank you, Lonnie. Take care. Thank you for joining the Age of Fission radio show with your host, Lonnie Clark. We'll be back next week to bring you more information about the nuclear industry and the harm it's causing our planet and humanity. Find all of our podcasts on Spreaker.com or on YouTube at Nuts for Art, N-U-T-Z-F-O-R-A-R-T. Thank you for being part of the solution. You're listening to Real Liberty Media. Please feel free to join in on our chat and live streams whenever you can. If not, access all of our podcasts at reallibertymedia.com. And remember, share Real Liberty Media with your friends, family, and on all of your social media outlets. Please help our station grow. 
and thank you for joining Real Liberty Media 